All right, Rick Fuker joins us. A lot of things working me up today. It's good to see Rick back in. Uh, um, you're going to be on Speak today, and yep. you were on the Undisputed this morning. Correct. I, I do want to get to this because I thought it was a really strong opinion by Byron Scott today yep. about the Lakers coaching search where they're now going to hire their eighth coach in 14 years. And I said yesterday, if they weren't the Lakers brand, you'd be like, what are you, the Jets? Yeah. So it's like, it's weird. It's too many. It seems desperate and impulsive. So here was Byron Scott's opinion. The next Laker coach, and out of the eight or nine names that I've heard, his name wasn't known there, is make LeBron the coach. It's obvious to me, at least, that he's making a lot of decisions that's going on in this organization. No doubt. From a coaching standpoint to a player standpoint. So if you're going to allow him to make those decisions, all right, sit on the bench and make those decisions as well. Be the head coach. As far as I'm concerned, the only person that he's going to really trust is, is himself. And since you're making a lot of these decisions anyway, <laughs> Why not put him in that seat? Um, kind of a shot at LeBron. Um, and, Le and Byron's part of the family. So Byron, yeah. your Norm Nixons, your Worthies, your, those guys are family for the Lakers. Yeah. Do you believe that's a feeling shared by many in the organization? Uh, a, f a few, yes. Um, I believe Robert Ori was on there on Spectrum and what said, hey, we've got to be honest, like LeBron's the reason they got knocked out. So... There have been, there's been some chirping now from various places uh, from the Lakers family to suggest that LeBron's not taking as much accountability for where they are and what has happened as, as he should. And you agree with that? Uh, I, I do. I do. Honestly, I mean, and, and look, I don't think it's his fault. I think some of it is the structure of the Lakers and sure. that, that LeBron at 39 years old is still their go-to guy. And, but the fact that he's has tried to suggest that he's the same player he's always been because the numbers look familiar yeah. is he, uh, that I'm not, I can't take you seriously. You yeah. know, the game better than that. You know what you were at one point, you're playing no defense. You have to play big in order to be functional as an offensive player. Good, good point. And that screws up the rest That's of right. the team. That's right. So. Uh, it, it's it's not it's not legit and and I, you know I think Byron is speaking for all the coaches that have been fired to say if we're gonna play if you're gonna dictate when you go in and out of the game and how many minutes you play and how we're gonna run our offense why don't you just go well, ahead it, it reminds me a little of Belichick so when Belichick started the dynasty it was do your job and sacrifice for the team. Yes. I can argue at the end, Bill got very selfish. I'm going to be the GM. I'm going to be the coach. I'm only going to have guys that I want to coach. Yeah. Well, that's not. And, and I'm going to only have coaches work for me that I, that I know retread. and I'm familiar with. LeBron, nobody could dispute this, was a pretty unselfish player, high school to early NBA. He elevated very marginal play. He could have scored 45 a night. Now you can argue he's a bit of a selfish player, more finger pointing, yeah. less acknowledging your game has changed. I think your best point there of the many is he now dominates. He has to play big to score. Yes. He finds the weakness and bullies the smaller player yeah, more often. Yeah. In order for him to maintain the numbers and to look yeah, this like is a good he's point. the same player, he has to exploit. The, the system has to work for him at the expense of other players. If that makes sense. Yes, it does. Because if you if you look at the big games that Austin Reeves and D'Lo and any number of players, Anthony David, like all of those guys, Rui Hachimura, like had some really nice games when LeBron didn't play. And so when he plays, everybody is sort of catering to him, which again is okay. But when you lose and you're catering to a particular player, and you have to have a little sort of self-awareness and say, hey, maybe, maybe. I mean, for example, in the Denver series, I thought that their best chance of winning is if LeBron James guarded Nikola Jokic. Because then you have Anthony Davis off the ball. LeBron can't guard Aaron Gordon. He's not athletic enough anymore, right? Or Michael Porter Jr. Or he's not going to chase around Jamal Murray. And he's not going to chase around Jamal Murray. Interesting. So, and, and you see with Nas Reed against Nikola Jokic, that if you have somebody who's six eight six nine and really strong and gets under him, that makes him uncomfortable. Particularly if you have a, a shot blocker, Carl Anthony Towns or Rudy Gobert, yeah. lurking.
that makes things difficult. But I don't believe that LeBron wanted to do the yeoman's work of I'm just going to put my energy into the defensive side of the ball. And Jokic is probably going to score on me at times. And make you look bad. Which I really don't, like, I don't want that either. But for me, it's like, if this gives us a better chance of winning, then that's, that's a, what you should be That's a pretty doing. good take. So I've said, I don't like high usage rate guys. They mm. break down, mm. and especially if you ask him to play defense and offense, Luca the first time. I know where this is going. He's three-point shots done. He's His legs are shot. Yeah. So high usage rate guy, SGA, his numbers have come down from the regular season. Mm -hmm. Harden historically. Mm -hmm. Giannis is hurt. Mm -hmm. Luca doesn't look like he has his legs. Mm -hmm. And I understand, like Jalen Brunson has to do it, and I do think the Mitchell Robinson injury may be the Jenga piece that the Knicks just can't keep asking everybody to play the whole game. Maybe not. The Knicks are a fascinating story. But I do, th and I've said this about Luka, I do, I've never seen MJ or Kobe. What I see is more mellow. He's going to finish an all-time great score. He'll play defense when he feels like it. Mm. He'll be hard to put people next to. Stuff will work intermittently. And in the end, the usage rate will leave us with a player at the end that feels a little exhausted. Yeah. I... I saw a change in him this year where I thought, and, and the usage rate reflected it, where he was getting the ball out of his hands quicker. He was utilizing his teammates more. Somewhere in the middle of the season, I think maybe because they were struggling, he took that over again. I think he's willing to. And I, and it actually, the, the, where the light came on for me is watching him with the Slovenian team. He does not dominate the ball with the Slovenian team, and they collectively are better as a result of it. So I believe he has that capability and that willingness. He has to have the players around him that he trusts are going to get it done. Kyrie helped with that, and I think when, when Tim Hardaway Jr., if I'm not mistaken, either got injured or, yeah. or fell off, he started to take more of it. I think what you're seeing right now is simply because of the sprained knee, he can't get to the same places. He can't play as quick. And so to influence yeah. the game, he's shooting more threes. So I have just a light bulb went off in my head. I'm going to write a book. It'll be a short book on my backwards hat theory and explain it because people get confused. This, is ha this has had an influence on yours truly. I, I, I don't like J.J. Redick wearing a hat backwards as a fledgling coach executive yeah. in this league at a high intellectual level. I don't mind players doing it. I even said in the NFL, I don't care about it. But it's that Wednesday presser by the franchise quarterback. I don't care if you do it on the side. I don't care about any other position. I don't like the bank president doing it. Yeah. If a bank teller does it at a company picnic, I don't care. Yeah. Right? So go ahead. Well, well, so two things. One, I used to always wear my hat backwards. Uh, especially if I've, if I've been surfing, your hair is like just – and yeah. I'd wear it backward. And since you've been going on these rants, I just – I am so conscious of <laughs> – I am, uh, you know, I, I I know my age, and 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 I'm walking around town with my hat backward. It, it's it's not appropriate. And I've done a little bit of 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 media training for for people, and I will say, and I tell them, like, uh, most people who see you on TV, they can't hear what you're saying. They're seeing it in a bar. They're seeing it walking by a store, whatever it is. They're just seeing the image of you and they are getting an impression of you mm. by the way, by your look, by your expressions, by your body language, all of that. Okay. And when you're on TV with a hat backwards and you're supposed to be an authority, you, you are not looking like an authority so, with your hat backwards. So. Uh, that just that you uh, when are we going to the bar? I just got I. My frat boys are going to join me. You know, know what it is? That's what, it's that, not a, that's what that looks like. This is actually not a criticism of J.J. Reddick. It's an acknowledgement that he is a highly intellectual thought leader in basketball. It's below his standard. By the way, I had dinner last night, and I went out with somebody that sees me on occasion, and he goes, oh, why are you so dressed a sports coat? I said, I'm going to dinner with an NFL owner. Yeah. The standard changes. I'm not going to the dinner with an NFL owner with a muscle shirt on, hat on back. Hey, how you doing? Want me to move your couch? <laughs> hey. It was an NFL <laughs> owner. You, by the way, when I go out with my wife, yeah, collared shirt. She's yeah. beautiful. The standard races. Yeah. You guys all see this as me picking on people. I'm literally elevating your economic potential in all of you. Just, you know, look the part. I will say that 
you, but you're fighting against the grain. Oh, there's no question. America hates me on this topic. And you know what? Go, people, go people. take a, take a, take a, get on a plane. <laughs> people are coming on, no socks, sandals. Like, I had I'm this, like, come on. We're, this is a public place. I, I, what I, are I we doing? I went on a plane recently. I don't even like bringing a coffee on. I think it's disrespectful to the airline. I had a guy bring on like a, like a burrito like three <laughs> flights ago. All right. And I'm telling you, the smell of it. Oh, well, there's that. You know what J-Mac just said? He goes, yeah, I do that. <laughs> well, I, I don't do burritos, but I will bring on like a sandwich or Chipotle or something. Well, what, what do you? I got to eat. Now, it's like a oh, four-hour flight. Hold on. Flight. I mean, Come I don't want to get, in, I don't wanna get yeah. in, into a, an argument here, but like the airline okay. situation when it comes to Food's sustenance. <laughs> You're dead right. I'm, I'm gonna bring on. I'm I'm gonna bring on what I want to okay. eat. I was a okay? little I was a little precious on that one. Yeah, you, for yeah, sure. I'm wrong on that one. Okay, I'm wrong on that one. You the can take hat, that. The hat thing. Yeah, I think you got be more right. Hi everybody, it's me, Uncle Colin. Subscribe here to get the latest from the herd, including exclusive behind the scenes videos and more. Wherever you may be, however you may be watching. Thanks again for making us part of your day.